motivation to learn about other cultures, histories, art, or music can be the manner by which that knowledge can enhance our own lives. If we live a pace of life that seems too fast and inhumane, we can ask, where in the world do we find cultures that place greater value on human sensitivity, or who live at a slower, perhaps more humanistic pace? If we live in cultures that have cross-referenced value in life to material gain, where do we find human cultures that place a greater emphasis on community and interpersonal relationships? And if the manner by which we live life compromises common hospitality or the placing of others and the building of deep relationships below our own wants and needs, perhaps there are cultures who model self-sacrificing love, chivalry, and the deepest hospitality or sacrificial love above personal desire. Poetry in ancient Mesopotamia, Arabia, Greece, Persia, and across the Roman, Byzantine, and Turkish empires has been used as a way to exalt human virtues, bring governance and society accountable, and identify the qualities of sacrificial love and deepest human emotion. We met with Dr. Khatan Manwi, professor of Arabic poetry and literature, himself a known poet, and professional musician Victor Hanem, to discuss the influence of poetry on the culture and music of the Middle East. Uh, we were talking about the influence or the role of poetry in the behavior and faith of the Arabs. In fact, uh, the Arabs pride themselves on three traits, uh, three issues, very important in their lives. One of them is their generosity. They, they believe they were very hospitable and generous people. And the second trait is, um, uh, is their um, chivalry, their knighthood. They believe that people have to be brave. In fact, Napoleon said, if, 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 if my soldiers have the bravery of the Arabs and the stubbornness of the Persians, <laughs> I would have conquered the whole universe. So you see, Arab um, uh, courage was uh, well uh, notified and documented. And, and the third uh, trait that, that the Arabs pride themselves on is their poetry. The poetry is their essence, is, is the, the food of the soul to them. Uh, they are poets by nature. Poetry across the Middle East extends back two to three thousand years. By the end of the eighth century, Arabic and Persian poetic writing and recitation in imitation of earlier poets, such as Imrul Aqais and Zayr ibn Abi Sulma, whose work parallels the beginning of Islam, were increasingly emulated across the Middle East. By the 10th century, Arab poets such as Al-Mutanabi spread the influence of poetry from the courts and mosques into the daily culture of the Arab world. Um, the greatest poet, Al-Mutanabi, uh, who is to me the greatest poet ever walked the face of the earth, died because of a poem he wrote. He was murdered. He, he has the greatest talent of all, uh, not from the 9th century to the present time, but one millennium before that. Mm -hmm. So I would say Al-Mutanabi is just a, a jump, historical jump. Nobody could ever match him. And we talk about Shakespeare in English language, and sometimes I tell my friends that Mutanabi put Shakespeare in his pocket. Wow. So strong was the Arab and Persian passion for versifying everyday life that we can encounter poetry in almost every classical work whether in literature, science, or metaphysics, the influence extends itself even into daily life. Well, uh, English, uh, sorry, Arabic poetry uh, played a very important essential role in the behavior and faith of the Arabs in general. As I said to you that uh, they are either um, lover, lovers of poetry or they are poets themselves, because you find most of them write poetry or they are infatuated with, with poetry. And, and it played a very important role in their lives that they, when they talk to you, they read you a line of poetry. When they swear to you, they, when they give you advice, they give you a line of poetry. So it is completely connected with the culture itself, and as no other culture in the, in the universe. And uh, he is one of the 
people of Mu'allaqat, these are the most famous seven uh, po poems in the Arab history. Mm -hmm. And they are hanged on the lines or the walls of Mecca, of Kaaba, mm -hmm. where they go for pilgrimage. The topics of poetry and song both reflect and fortify the cultural values and customs of the region. Among them, the manner by which poetry completely influences music. Music of the region is largely melodic and patterned after the rhythms, meter, and even intonations of spoken words. The maqam or dasgal, Arabic or Persian scales or melodic modes, are designed to emulate emotion. And in the Arabic music, we have a variety of maqams, which are basically musical scales. And the saddest one of all is called saba. Saba. <laughs> interesting Middle Eastern poetic and musical formulas is the mahwal, a tradition of the singer-poet demonstrating his vocal skill before the song begins, and the taksim, an instrumentally improvised section which will precede the chanted or sung poem or song. Both of these represent in music the tradition of the region to give time to transition from the material world to the spiritual or musical world. Much like the tradition of offering tea before dinner or conducting business, the mahwal or taksim are a type of musical tea, a transition to the spiritual world. Basically when you do taksim, which is an imp improvisational piece, uh, totally unrehearsed usually. You know, some people try to plan it out and have an idea what they want to do, but you're basically playing whatever's on your mind and what's in your heart. The point starts very slowly and then uh, goes to the emotion, ra ra raise the emotion of raise the emotion of the audience gradually and suddenly you hit them with a line of poetry that they never expected and that's where the uh, the, ma the, the, the climax of the paragraph comes and then they will be influenced completely. Persian history dates back over 6,000 years into history, and Persian poetry and literature leaves traces over the last 2,500 years. Although there are numerous monuments of magnificent buildings scattered across what is now Iran, such as those found in Persepolis, the ceremonial capital of the Persian Empire three to four hundred years before Christ. A visit to Shiraz, a leading center of the arts, reminds us that Persian poetry, art, and music have inspired many around the world for centuries. The Persian poets Sa'di, Rumi, and Hafez wrote numerous verses and poems depicting the ideal state of the human soul, desiring oneness with God and exalting sacrificial love for others with deepest emotion into the heart of Persian culture. افسوس که نامه جوانی طی شد افسوس که نامه جوانی طی شد وان تاز بهار زندگانی دی شد آن مرغ طرب که نام او بود شباب فریاد Nadonam ke kiyomat keishot. Oh
زلف تو هم جانا در این پریشانی چون باد سهرگاهم در بی سر و سامانی من خاکم و من گردم من عشقم و من دردم تو مهری و تو نوری تو عشقی و تو جانی خواهم که تو را در بد بنشانم و بنشینم تا آتش جانم را بنشینی و بنشانی والصبح يشرق بعد ليل أسودي لا تدفعي هلما ولا تترددي لا تشتكي بالواك لا تتنهدي مروا طغاة الأرض فيك فلم ينل أحد رضاك وما ربخت لأحد Thank you. 